back in business. Snow removal companies hit the road after snowfalls in Billings and beyond. We always got to be ready to go. We'll ride along shoveling and plowing out from Old Man Winter's latest blast. And gunshots in a Roundup neighborhood sparking concern after a car is shot nearly 20 times. What the sheriff is saying about it. Also, old becomes new again. Connecting two very old neighborhoods and buildings, the south side and the north side. A downtown connection. City officials aim to get a $5.5 million project off the ground and bring an old bridge back to life. The MTN 530 News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Russ Riesinger. Well, it's all calm outside as blue skies have moved back into Billings, but that wasn't the case this morning. Billings finally received a few inches of snow. It was enough to cause a little trouble on the roads and made for a very busy day for snow removal companies. Tonight, Charlie Kleps rides along with one man who knows firsthand the toll a lack of snow can take on some businesses. It's been a slow start to the winter in terms of snowfall, but the city is certainly starting to look like a winter wonderland. And that's good news to snow removal companies. Most are small business owners who have certainly been waiting to put their plows and shovels to use. As snow piled up around the city of Billings Thursday morning, many were still asleep. We started at 3.30 this morning. But Jason Linewan, who runs a snow removal business, was wide awake. Ready to dig into the freshly fallen snow. Today, with the amount of snow, it's looking like a pretty long day for me, for me probably. At least a 12 hour shift. You heard that right. Line One expects to be moving snow for 12 hours, but you won't hear any complaints from him. We always got to be ready to go um, for snow removal. It's just the name of the game now. And Line One and his crew were ready, maybe even eager, for Thursday's snowfall. Line One's company, J Rat Lawn and Landscaping, doubles as a lawn maintenance business. He says the transition between seasons can be difficult. We had that October snowstorm this year that we dealt with. Kind of a headache because of the fact that we had transition from snow and then back into leaves. But this winter has been more difficult than most. After that October storm, the snow stopped falling, which means business dried up. We ended up finishing up leaves and stuff by 1st of December and uh, then we were just waiting on snow and didn't snow until you know middle of January. But Line One who was born and raised in Montana knows it's just a part of the experience. The average the amount of day, snow days that you get in a season um, is 15 is what we anticipate. That's just how we have to treat it now is always be ready for snow. A business that's always ready to help and one that takes pride in what they do. You're helping out your customers, you're helping out people getting to and from work and not slipping on their sidewalk. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Well, hopefully that won't be the final time they're busy this winter. In western Montana, snow removal companies have been especially busy. Take a look at this here. This is a bird's eye view from Arley, which saw nearly a foot of snow. Same thing in Kalispell. Some towns like Columbia Falls reported up to 19 inches of snow. In Cook City, snowmobilers were enjoying a fresh 11.5 inches of fresh powder today. Then a place that almost always sees snow, Red Lodge, only came in at about an inch of new snow. Well, here in Billings, right around two inches around the city today. But now that the snow and clouds have departed, it looks like another cold night awaits. With more on that, here's meteorologist Jason Stiff. Well, it was nice to get that snow. I'm going to show you some of the snow totals coming up later in our broadcast, but now we're losing those snow bearing clouds and it's going to mean another cold night tonight. Much colder tomorrow morning than it was this morning with a lack of clouds, a wind chill advisory out until 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, and also a big about face is coming weather wise for us as we head into the rest of this upcoming weekend and early next week. But today, not a very warm day for the Magic City. We had a high of 10 degrees. We've now had had over five inches of snow for the month of January thus far. This morning's low was three degrees. However, we're already colder than that right now in the five o'clock hour. Going to let you know how cold it's going to get tomorrow and all of your big changes coming in a few minutes. 
The winter weather has brought challenges to communities across the state this week, from burst pipes to snowy roads, but Montanans and especially Montana kids persevere, especially when a special opportunity is on the line. MTN's Jackie Coffin went to Coal Strip to find out how in tonight's Positively Montana. Positively Montana is sponsored by Yellowstone Valley Electric Cooperative. An emergency closure was put in place for all schools in Coal Strip on Tuesday after a sprinkler line break and electrical issues were found here at Coal Strip High School. All activities were also set to be canceled, but some made adjustments saying the show must go on. All together, ready and... Despite double-digit sub-zero temperatures, freezing pipes, and canceling school, dozens of kids filled the community center in Coal Strip for a once-in-a-year opportunity. So this week we are doing Treasure Island. That starts with a little red truck pulling into town. This winter and spring, Fiona Lazari and Andrew Mozingo are traveling across Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, and Washington. And the roads were dirty on the way here. As one of several two-person teams with the Missoula Children's Theater that travel to all 50 states in 17 different countries. On Monday, we cast all the kids in it, and then by Friday or Saturday, we put on the show, and it is a hour-long musical um, with a full cast of characters and singing and dancing. This week, the truck full of costumes, scripts, and sets pulled into Coal Strip, only to find weather delays. We have to adjust our schedule and make changes that way. But the town was determined to make the play go on. We had to get the word out with Facebook and texts and emails and word of mouth and and all these kids showed up when there was no school. Erlene Rosander is a retired teacher and has watched MCT plays come into Coal Strip for more than 30 years. The theater is something that children that are growing up in eastern Montana would never experience if we didn't bring it here. Do you get to be in plays a lot here? No. And for Coal Strip kids, it's a rare chance to try out show business. I just really want to be an actor when I grow up and everything, so I'm auditioning. And as every kid tried their best to make a splash, I stick to the popcorn and do something. The MCT team says there's enough parts to include every young actor here in Coal Strip. In Coal Strip, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. A barrage of bullets has a neighborhood on edge in Roundup. According to Musselshell County Sheriff Sean Lesnick, a vehicle on 2nd Street West was shot nearly 20 times. Suspects have been identified, but no arrests have been made. As you can see from these photos, dozens of bullet holes were left in the vehicle. Lesnick says it was an act of vandalism with a firearm with the suspect solely targeting the vehicle. He says there are no concerns for the public, but that the investigation is ongoing. By now, you've probably heard of Dry January. The annual event challenges people to abstain from alcohol for a month. It's also shining a spotlight on alcohol abuse. 11% of the nation has been diagnosed with alcohol use disorder. And as Arlena Howder found out, that's a statistic that is troubling to many health professionals, given the medications that are now available to treat it. Thanks, Russ. This is Tim Van Orden. The 64-year-old Billings man passed away last year from illnesses related to alcohol use. Tonight, his daughter is sharing his story in hopes it may inspire others to consider medication that's proven to be very successful. This is one of my favorite photos of him. It's been a year since Jen Schaff's father, Tim Van Orden, passed away. He was an incredibly smart, witty, he was the life of every party. But the longtime railroader battled demons his entire life. My dad was an amazing person, but he was a lifelong alcoholic. He struggled all of his life with addiction disorder. Tim's story isn't uncommon. Yep, he loved that day. 11% of Americans have been diagnosed with alcohol use disorder, a large number compared to the 2% diagnosed with opioid addiction disorder. I guess one of my concerns is, are we missing the boat when it comes to the problem that alcohol is causing? Dr. Eric Arzubi owns Frontier Psychiatry here in Billings and has been concerned for a while, in large part because there's medication that can help, but few know about it. We have treatments that work, but they're not getting to people. And that's 
you know, that's one of the things that kind of frustrates me. There are five different medications on the market that help curb the craving of alcohol, but less than 1% of those with alcohol use disorder have access to them. Compare that to opioid use disorder, where an estimated 22% of those afflicted have access to meds. There are actually three FDA-approved medications, and like I said, these have been around for a long time. It's medicine Jen Schaff wishes her father could have had. Dad had been in treatment. You know, you lose track, but three or four times, and not one time was he ever offered a medication that would reduce those cravings for alcohol. And it's why both Jen and Dr. Arzubi are hoping to educate the public. That's the day my sister was born. And an effort to prevent any more deaths. Alcohol use disorders are more of a problem than we might appreciate. Yeah. It's affecting a lot of people, and help is available. And there are medications that are effective, are inexpensive, and are available. He fought and he clawed his way through trying to do the best that he could. But I hope that it evolves. I hope that people realize what is out there for them. And, and then I also hope that they scream on the mountaintops and ask for help. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. Well, still to come on the MTN 530 News here on Q2. City Connector, a project years in the making, looks to be reborn over the tracks. We'll have details next. And in the spotlight, we'll meet one Ram who is hoping to take Central to greater heights on the hardwood. That story in just a bit.